All right, we're going to be looking at number two question in this video. Question number two. Number two question on what? 2024 free responses. I'm going to be doing the videos for question three, four, five, and six. I already did the video for one. So go check that out. Like this video. Comment down below what you think your answer was. Give me a subscribe if you haven't done all those things because you know it helps me out. I'm a poor, starving teacher. Actually, none of those things. Do what you want. Question number two. Let's look at it. Uh, to investigate how increases in environmental temperatures affect the metabolism of certain organisms, researchers incubated liver cells from toads at different temperatures. It's always something weird. Livers in toads. Liver cells in toads from different temperatures to measure two marker metabolic two markers of metabolic activity, rate of oxygen consumption, rate of ATP synthesis. Describe the role of water in the hydrolysis of ATP. What is hydrolysis? It's when you take water, add water to something to separate it. What is being separated in ATP? Second and third phosphate. So I'm going to say the role of water is adding water causes the separation of the second and third phosphate of ATP. Moving on. Part B, uh, use the template in the space provided for your response, or using the template, construct a bar graph. Wow, you guys are fortunate. They told you what type of graph to use. It's really nice of them. That represents the data shown in table one. Your graph should be appropriately plotted and labeled. So you have your error bars there, you have all your data. Um, so I don't have information on the, the size of the graph. And so I was hesitant to draw a graph, but I can tell you kind of what I would do, obviously. Uh, besides the simple plotting of the points and all that sort of thing, what I would have done is I would have had um, my ind independent variable is going to be 20, 25, and 30. So across the bottom is going to be the different temperatures. And then you're going to be um, measuring the um, rate of oxygen consumption and the rate of ATP synthesis. And so, um, and both of these are measured in nanomoles per minute. You could do a dual Y graph here. And so you have uh, one on one Y on the other side and one Y on the other. Um, or you could just put both of them on one Y axis. Um, I think that'd probably be better. Actually, a little less confusing. And, um, and so you have 20, 25, 30, and then you have one bar that's one color bar or shaded or however you did it is going to represent a uh, rate of oxygen consumption and the other bar is going to represent a uh, rate of ATP synthesis. And so each of the temperatures is going to have two bars next to it and you're going to do your little air bars and whatnot. Okay. So that's your graph. Again, I don't have the information on how big the, the actual grid was. And so I was hesitant to do that. Um, but anyway, graphing. That's three year points, by the way. And we got one for part A already. Uh, based on the data determine the temperature in Celsius at which the rate of oxygen consumption is different from the rate of oxygen consumption uh, at 25 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. Which one is significantly different? Um, well, considering that there's 4.2 in between these two, yeah, it'd be these two. So... Um, 30 degrees Celsius is different, significantly different than 25 degrees Celsius. Part B, part R2, B, moving on. Part C, based on the data table in table one, describe the effective temperature on the rate of ATP synthesis in liver cells from toads. Increases. Next. Um, Based on the data table one, calculate the average. Okay, this one was hard. Uh, I maybe went over part one a little too fast. Uh, as temperature increases, then uh, liver rate of ATP synthesis increases. Um, calculate the average oxygen consumed in nanomoles for 10 milligrams of mitochondrial protein after 10 minutes. Okay, this is sneaky. So. Uh, 25 degrees Celsius, a oxygen consumption. So it's right here, right? Um, and right now it's w one milligram in one minute. And so you're going to multiply this number times 10 twice because it's 10 milligrams and it's 10 minutes. And so it's going to be 1650. 
final answer, part D. Um, oligomycin is a compound that can block the channel protein function of ATP synthase. Uh, predict the effects of using oligomycin on the proton gradient across the inner, mem inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, you guys remember proton gradients being built up on the inner mitochondrial membrane and uh, that gradient is necessary for the production of ATP synthase because ATP synthase is used as a protein channel as the protons go or proton channel as the protons go across ATP synthase it spins around makes ATP right and so what if that channel protein function was broken protons would never be able to diffuse across the membrane the concentration gradient would continue to build in the inner in membrane space that's part one that's my prediction justification well i just gave it ATP synthase uses the gradient to make atp and without the channel could not release that gradient this video is a little shorter because this obviously you're going to be graphing um again don't have the grid information perhaps if i get that grid information um, I will do a graph of this one. Otherwise, um, this question wasn't that bad. I think the calculation may trip some people up. Um, but otherwise, it was fairly straightforward. And even the second part of Part B, you really didn't need to, to graph it in order to see that. Though graphing it would have helped you to see that. And um, so, yeah, hopefully this was helpful.